tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Let's get started with animation. Hi folks, I want to show you something about scaling and dimensions in dynamic simulations. I'll let a block of water fall onto a character. And as the character I chose this low polygon girl created by Ted Permana, Permana here on TurboSquid. It's free and it comes in no Maya generic format. That's why I go for the OBJ version, download it and drag drop it into a new Maya scene. It arrives and is very, very big in size. See how small the Maya grid is. We'll address this later. First, let's do some simple shading work. The girl consists of five polygon shells, two for the clothes, one for the stool, one for the hair and one for the skin tone. I choose only Maya lamper shaders, simple to apply and easy to render. Let's talk dimensions now. I open the Windows menu where I find the preferences. Settings are right in the middle and here are the working units. The default is centimeters. Since our sitting girl is not a couple of centimeters tall but maybe 1.7 meters, we change the working units from centimeters to meters. Now the grid looks okay and this is crucial for all kinds of character animations because the characters come in the scene in dimensions of meters, not in centimeters. Times for some water. I create a polygon cube. It will emit the water. Water is a special effect, so I invoke FX at the top left. The menu tree we need for water is under Bifrost. With the cube selected, I choose liquid. Now Maya has to think quite a bit. This has to do with the dimensions and the scaling of the scene. That's what this tutorial is mainly about. Meters rather than centimeters. The blue block shows the water particle density. Very dense. Under the liquid shape tab in the attribute editor, I activate the voxels. This is only for preview and does not affect rendering. Before running the simulation, I select the hair, the body and the clothes, plus the liquid. Under the Bifrost menu, I define the girl's geometry as the collider for the water. I need to select the geometry plus the water. It's a good habit to introduce a kill plane for the simulation. You don't need to do this, but uh, I like to do it. It will stop the water when touching the ground. It will just stop the simulation there. Maya is reacting to our clicks with a long delay now. The reason is this massive amount of water. When running the simulation it takes 15 seconds to visualize frame 2. Let me speed this up for you. I had a cup of tea in the meantime. We're at frame 57 and we see a nice splash of water around the head. Let's introduce the sky dome light. Set its visibility to zero, which is black and render frame 57. Nice. For testing a simulation, this speed, this lag is unbearable. We need something closer to real time. The key to achieve this is in one single parameter called the master voxel size. You find it in the attribute editor in the liquid properties container tab. Liquid properties container or just search for it. The default is set to 0 0.5. Since we have such a big scene, we can easily type in 5 or 50. Now the block above the girl's head is not that blue anymore and the simulation performs much quicker. A few seconds later, we stop at frame 50 where the water reaches the head, but does not splash. This is perfect for evaluation and for camera settings etc. The, for rendering you should decrease the voxel size again. We talk about dimensions and simulations today. Let me pack the girl's polygons plus the polygon cube above her head into a group with Control G. Copy it with Control C. Create a new scene and paste it there with Control V. This time I won't change the dimensions at, of the scene. I'll rather scale down the girl group until it suits the grid, which is a centimeter grid. The girl is a little toy now. 
Time for water again, same procedure as before. The polygon block becomes the bifrost emitter. The girl serves as the collider. We want to see the water as voxels and then we hide the emitting cube. When we run the simulation, it goes very fast. At frame 20, the water leaves the bottom of the stool, so it's through already. In the Arnold render view, it looks like a piece of cloth rather than a blob of water. Why is that? Well, because of the resolution of the master pixels. That's why I search for the master voxel size again. No, it's not the point size, it's the master voxel size. Since the scene is so tiny, we need tiny water particles. And I changed the voxel size from 0.5 to one tenth of 0.5, which is 0.05. The block of water looks more blue now, and the simulation at this scale still goes pretty fast, but slower than before. We don't have enough splashes, but we get a good impression of the water and its impact on the character's head. Master voxel size 5 times smaller, 0.01. This slows down Maya quite a bit, like before at the huge scale. Let me fast forward this video to when the simulation reaches frame 8 or 9. To wrap this up, gravity is the same in both scenes, but simulations not only involving bifrost water need different resolutions. That is, the master voxel sizes for different scene scales. And start simulations of water with a higher voxel size and fine-tune them later for rendering. And having said all this, I wish you a very good rendering day!